Welcome to another reading of the Book of Jubilees. Today we are only going to be reading through chapter 19 and chapter 20. Last week we read through chapters 13 through 18. And last week on the Dark Outpost we only made it to chapter 17 because we had a lot to talk about regarding the IBLP and the Josh Duggar case. So this week on the Dark Outpost we went through chapters 17 through 20 and so today on this channel, we will just be reading through chapters 19 and 20 so that we're on the same bookmarked place on both platforms. Once again, if you would like to join us on the Dark Outpost where we have a deeper discussion regarding these missing books of the Bible, there is a link down in the description box below. You can also find David Zublik on BitChute and on Rumble. So getting into the book of Jubilee, chapter 19, this is the death and burial of Sarah. And in the first year of the first week in the 42nd Jubilee, Adam returned and dwelt opposite Hebron, that is Kirjath Arba, two weeks of years. And in the first year of the third week of this Jubilee, the days of the life of Sarah were accomplished and she died in Hebron. I kind of like that, saying that the days of your life are accomplished, like you accomplished your journey here. Instead of saying, oh, so-and-so died, we could say, oh, they accomplished their life. It's over. They accomplished it. And Abraham went to mourn over her and bury her, and we tried him, if his spirits, and he were not indigenous in the words of his mouth, and he was found to be patient in this, and was not disturbed. For in patience of spirit, he conversed with the children of Heth to the intent that they should give him a place in which to bury his dead. And the Lord gave him grace before all who saw him, and he besought in gentleness the sons of Heth, and they gave him the land of the double cave over against memory, that is, Hebron, for four hundred pieces of silver. And they besought him, saying, We shall give it to thee for nothing. But he would not take it from their hands for nothing. For he gave the price of the place, the money in full, and he bowed down before them twice. And after this, he buried his dead in the double cave. And all the days of the life of Sarah were 127 years. That is, two jubilees and four weeks in one year. These are the days of the years of the life of Sarah. And in the tenth trial, wherewith Abraham was tried, he was found faithful, patient, in spirit. And he said not a single word regarding the rumor in the land, how that God had said he would give it to him and his seed after him. And he begged a place there to bury his dead, for he was found faithful and was recorded on the heavenly tables as a friend of God. And in the fourth year thereof, he took a wife for his son Isaac, and her name was Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Nahor, the brother of Abraham the sister of Laban and the daughter of Bethuel, and Bethel was the son of Melech, who was the wife of Nahor, the brother of Abraham. So Rebekah is Abraham's great niece. That would mean that Rebekah is Isaac's first cousin once removed. And Abraham took a wife, a third wife, and her name was Keturah. From among the daughters of his household, for Hagar had died before Sarah. Now, Kator is one of the most ignored characters in Genesis. I actually have a quote here. The most ignored significant person in the Torah. And she is Abraham's, obviously his third wife. Now, allegedly a lot of biblical scholars who are just working obviously off the canonized Bible think that Kator or Keturah, however your church says her name, and Hagar, Ishmael's mother, were possibly the same woman, but we see here in Jubilee that they're not the same person. Because again, the 11th verse of chapter 19 says, And Abraham took himself a third wife, and her name was Keturah, from among the daughters of his household servants, for Hagar had died before Sarah. So we're specifying Keturah as actually his third wife, and we're saying in this verse, too, that both Hagar and Sarah are now deceased. Their lives were accomplished. So Kator is a, her own individual person. 
and she bare him six sons, Zimran, and Zokshan, and Medan, and Midian, and Ishbak, and Shioa, in the two weeks of years. Now, her sons are also, these six sons are also mentioned in Genesis, in the canonized Bible, and also First Chronicles. Those are the only two places where they're really mentioned, um, but they are in the canonized Bible, this whole story with her sons. And it's believed that her sons are the, the Arab tribes that live south of Israel. Some people also believe that her sons could also have gone into Africa as well, into the land of Ham from Shem. Okay, verse 13. And in the sixth week of the second year thereof, Rebekah bare to Isaac two sons, Jacob and Esau. So remember, Jacob and Esau are twins. So when it says she bare him two sons, she literally bared him two sons at the same time. And Jacob was a smooth and upright man, and Esau was fierce, a man of the field and hairy, and Jacob dwelt in tents. And the youths grew, and Jacob learned to write. But Esau did not learn, for he was the man of the field and a hunter, and he learned war, and all his deeds were fierce. And Abraham loved Jacob. But Isaac loved Esau, and Abraham saw the deeds of Esau, and he knew that in Jacob should his name and seed be called. And he called Rebekah and gave commandments regarding Jacob, for he knew that she too loved Jacob more than Esau. He said unto her, My daughter, watch over my son Jacob, for he shall be in my steed on the earth, and for a blessing in the midst of the children of men, and for the glory of the whole seed of Shem. For I know that the Lord will choose him to be a people for possession unto himself above all peoples that are upon the face of the earth. And behold, Isaac my son loveth Esau more than Jacob, but I see that thou truly lovest Jacob. Add still further to thy kindness to him, and let thine eyes be upon him in love. For he will be a blessing unto us on the earth from henceforth unto all generations of the earth. Let thy hands be strong, and let thy heart rejoice in thy son Jacob, for I have loved him far beyond all my sons. He will be blessed forever, and his seed will fill the whole earth. If a man can number the sands of the earth, his seed also will be numbered. So again, there's a footnote here that says Jacob was the founder of the chosen nation. Well, we know that Isaac, his father, was also part of the covenant with Abraham and God and Sarah, that Sarah's son Isaac, who is Jacob's father, was the holder of the covenant. Now Jacob is the founder of the chosen nation. We, we know this from the Bible, but it's interesting to also see this retold in these books that were banned from the Bible. And all the blessing wherewith the Lord hath blessed me and my seed shall belong to Jacob and his seed always. And in his seed shall my name be blessed in the name of my fathers Shem and Noah and Enoch and Mahaliel and Enos and Seth and Adam. And these shall serve to lay the foundations of heaven and to strengthen the earth and to renew all the luminaries which are the firmament. And he called Jacob before the eyes of Rebekah his mother, and kissed him and blessed him. And he said, Jacob, my beloved son, whom my soul loveth, may God bless thee from above the firmament, and may he give thee all the blessings wherewith he blessed Adam and Enoch and Noah and Shem, and all the things of which he told me, and all the things in which he promised to give me. May he cause to cleave to thee and thy seed forever, according to the days of heaven above the earth. And the spirits of Mestima, shall not rule over thee or thy seed to turn thee from the Lord, who is thy God from henceforth forever. So again, Mestima is basically Satan. And if you guys have been following along, you know that throughout this whole book, they refer to Satan as Mestima or the great adversary. And may the Lord God be a father to thee and thou the firstborn son to the people always. Go in peace, my son. And they both went forth together from Abraham. And Rebekah loved Jacob with all her heart and with all her soul very much more than Esau, but Isaac loved Esau much more than Jacob. So this brings us to chapter 20 of the book of Jubilee, Abraham's last words to his children and his grandchildren. 
And in the forty-second jubilee, in the first year of the seventh week, Abraham called Ishmael and his twelve sons, and Isaac and his two sons, and the six sons of Ketur and their sons. And he commanded them that they should observe the way of the Lord, and they should work in righteousness, and love each his neighbor, and act on this manner amongst men, that they should each so walk with regard to them as to do judgment and righteousness on the earth. And they should circumcise their sons according to the covenant which he had made with them, and not deviate to the right hand or to the left hand all of the paths which the Lord had commanded us. And we should keep ourselves from all fornication and uncleanliness, and renounce from amongst us all fornications and uncleanliness. So it's interesting talking about fornications and uncleanliness because we know in the last reading that his nephew Lot, who had gone to Sodom, we know that story from the Bible of Sodom and Gomorrah, that they were basically claiming, they didn't really talk about in the book of Jubilee, homosexuality. That wasn't mentioned in that story here in Jubilee. What was mentioned about Sodom was that there was incest, where fathers were laying with their daughters. And that was the problem with Sodom. They actually referred to it that that hadn't happened since the days of Adam, which we know in the Genesis story with Adam and Eve, there had to be incest in order for human beings to, to populate the earth. But after that was accomplished, it then became unclean to lay with your own family, which I absolutely, I think most of us can agree with, is very much unclean. However, we do know that in a lot of other um, faiths, we'll say, with the Canaanites and the Phoenicians that still rule our world today or have ruled our world, I think they're being removed right now, but that they do practice incest. So that's interesting to me. Verse 4, And if any woman or maid commit fornication amongst you, burn her with fire, and let them not commit fornication with her after their eyes and their heart, and let them not take to themselves wives from the daughters of Canaan, for the seed of Canaan will be rooted out of the land. I think we're seeing that right now, again, the Canaanites. And he told them of the judgments of the giants and the judgment of the Sodomites and how they had been judged on according to their wickedness and had died on account of their fornication and uncleanliness and mutual corruption through fornication. And guard yourself from all fornication and uncleanliness and from all pollution of sin, lest ye make our name a curse and your whole life a hissing. And all your sons be destroyed by the sword and ye became accursed like Sodom and all your remnants as the sons of Gomorrah. I implore you, my sons, love the God of heaven and cleave you to all his commandments and walk not after their idols and after their uncleanliness. So yeah, it does seem like he's more specific in the book of Jubilees. Like don't, bas don't basically don't be a Luciferian is what he's saying, in my opinion. Now, 10 years ago, if I had read through this, I probably would not have picked up on that. But apocalypse does mean to lift the veil, right? And if we're in the apocalypse right now, the revelation, things are being revealed, then we're able to see things more clearly. The characters of the Bible were basically telling us this from the very beginning, that this is a battle between the Israelites and the Canaanites. And as we know from the Book of the Holy Twelve, the Israelites are not just people from Israel, but the people that follow the God of Abraham, the one singular source, not Mastima or Yeldabath or Lucifer. All right, verse 8. And make not for yourselves molten or graven gods, for they are vanity, and there is no spirit in them. For they are the work of men's hands, and all who trust in them trust in nothing. Serve them not, nor worship them. But serve ye the Most High God, and worship him continually, and hope for his countenance always, and work uprightness and righteousness before him, that he may have pleasure in you and grant you his mercy, and send rain upon you morning and evening, and bless all your works which he hath wrought upon the earth. And bless thy bread and thy water, and bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, and the herd of thy cattle and the flocks of thy sheep. And ye will be for a blessing on the earth, and all nations of the earth will desire you. 
and bless your sons in my name, that they may be blessed as I am. And he gave to Ishmael and to his sons and to the sons of Ketur gifts and sent them away from Isaac his son, and he gave everything to Isaac his son. And Ishmael and his sons and the sons of Ketur and their sons went together and dwelt from Paran to, in, to the entering in of Babylon in all the land, which is towards the east, facing the desert. And these mingled with each other, and their names were called Arabs and Ishmaelites. And that concludes chapter 20, which we're going to, again, conclude it there today, just so that we're on the same um, bookmark as we are on the Dark Outpost. I believe that makes it much more easier for me, if not for you too, as we go between two different platforms, breaking down this, this work. So once again, if you would like to follow along on the Dark Outposts, where we do have a much deeper discussion regarding this work, there is a link down in the description box below. I hope that you guys are having an awesome day, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.